Uh, Dave in Calgary. Hey, guys. Thank you Hi, for Dave. waiting. Yeah, no problem. That, uh, yeah, it was uh, almost like we were listening to the, uh, forgive the pun here, the Christian experience. Yes. For well, the first uh, mm -hmm. 35 minutes of the show. Well, that's what, yeah, you know, that's what I, I know. Course, like, get the Christians on. That's some, what they want to hear. Some, uh, some viewers would like us to hang up on annoying people as quickly as possible, and some really want the, uh, uh, the meaty discussion with religious people. So it's always yeah. kind of a balance. Oh, they're, they're schizophrenic, really. When you think about it, I mean, it's yeah, sort of like yeah. they, they demand. Yeah, it's like, no. we, want more, we want more Christians to call the show. Get more Christians on. And then they call the show, and then they're like immediately, hang, hang, up. Up, on this, <laughs> hang up on this moron. He's stupid. Right. We can't please right. you. Right. Well, anyway, yeah, so well, high maintenance. I want, thank, I want to thank Christian uh, to a certain extent because it was a good segue into something that I wanted to bring up as, as an atheist myself. Uh -huh. um, I mean, can, would you guys go so far as agreeing with me that even though we don't have proof and evidence and it can't be measured that people of faith are experiencing something emotionally, that, that, there, that there must be some truth to that. Uh, There's something there that they're experiencing emotionally, where, yeah, wherever I'm, that's coming from. I am willing to accept that they are expo experiencing something of a different nature emotionally than I have experienced, just like I'm willing yeah. to accept that there are, that people on LSD experience something different from what I yeah, have experienced. Yeah. And, yeah. and this, is, this is actually why I wanted to thank Christian for what he was talking about, because in the beginning, and, and I'm actually... Uh, <laughs> I work in the music industry myself, mm -hmm. and so he started talking about music, and that was actually exactly the uh, analogy I was going to bring up, along with um, kind of the morality, uh, the origins of morality, because that's one of the discussions I get into uh, quite a bit with people in, um, uh, that are of faith here in Calgary. Um, and the whole discussion is about, well, okay, and you guys have heard it a million times, if you know, we didn't have the Bible, then where would our morality come from? And I'm just simply going, okay, is, is it really that complicated to figure out that, that a combination of science and, you know, along with emotion um, and yeah. also the ability to actually feel mm -hmm. it can create its own morality? Like um, if I know, as an example, if I know that the science proves that when I push my friend in front of a train, and that train hits my friend, and he's going to die, that I'm going to feel a, a sense of loss or sorrow from that. So therefore, I'm going to develop a morality that well, says, well, yeah, that's true. shouldn't um, be pushing people in front of trains. The, uh, the way that I usually approach the morality question, uh, and uh, I recently gave a talk in Abilene, Texas, which I've got the complete transcript of on the blog. So you can see a much longer version of this uh, if you look on freethoughtblogs.com slash AXP for a recent really long post I, I wrote. Um, actually, I, actually, I want to touch on that point as well, so remind me. Okay. Uh, but um, the... The best defense here is a good offense because the morality in the Bible is terrible. Yes, I understand uh, that. Uh, there, <clears throat> it's it's full of stuff that very objectively modern people would would see at, as uh, kind of monstrous. Uh, I, I use the example of the story of Jephthah, which uh, uh, which you can read through uh, mm -hmm. when you get there about this guy who vowed to kill to sacrifice the first thing that walked through his door, and then it was his daughter, uh, and he did it anyway because you can't break a vow to God, and that's presented as if it was some kind of admirable thing in the Bible. Um, the Bible is full of terrible stuff like that, and as soon as you bring up something like this, people will people of faith will hem and haw and say. Well, it was just a metaphor, and you can't take that seriously. And just maybe the Old the Testament, lesson just was the different. Old Testament, yeah. Right. Yeah, but that, that's that, exactly my point. The, Russell, but, that's my point, though, is that, sorry to interrupt you, but just let me get this out, because um, right. I, I just want to make a point to what you're saying here, which yeah. is that that's exactly the problem with um, mm -hmm. a good defense is a good offense, is it's, it, doesn't, it still doesn't present itself as a good offense if they're not willing to... 
uh, listen to the reasoning behind that. Here's, so here's, they're, they're going to hum and haw. What, what I'm saying is that as soon as they start tap dancing around this, uh, this morality presented in the Bible, the first thing I would say to them is, oh, you don't get your morality from the Bible either. Because yeah. clearly, the fact that this was presented as a noble thing in the Bible is not in itself enough to make you think it's good. That means that you have some other standard uh, than what's written in this ancient book, and you feel free, as you should, to reject this terrible stuff when it suits, uh, when it doesn't uh, fit itself in your socially defined sense of right and wrong. Yeah, you see I mean, what that's, I mean? That's, that's precisely you, you and I. You and I that's precisely I the point. That. I mean, when you have, uh, you know, you, you have the claim that there are moral absolutes. And the Bible provides these, and then the, the instant you can provide uh, one morally objectionable thing in the Bible that causes the believer to do that tap dance and defense, you know, then, you know, I think yeah, Russell yeah, sort of made that point what, very clear. That's what you and I, that's what yeah. you and I see as an atheist. There are two. Not, they're, they're, they're not understanding it. There they're are two basic factors that to, to look into, and it, morality is not complicated. There are, two, but there are two things that religion, particularly Abrahamic religion, has gone out of its way to say that human beings are incapable of that we are, of course, perfectly capable of, and they're the only things that we need to apply to mor moral uh, situations, and those are reason and empathy. You know, empathy is known to be a, just a natural human condition. Uh, there have been, you know, studies and uh, done with children showing that, you know, very small children are naturally empathetic. They are naturally, they have a desire to be exactly. helpful to others. So this is part, it's part of human nature. And then there's also the reasoning aspect. You can look at a situation and say, you know, this is obviously not something that I would enjoy if I were on the receiving end of it. Therefore, I should not behave in this way to another person. So there's, there's, it, it's, it's, a, it's not rocket science, you know. It's, no, that's, it's a very that's my simple. Point too. Uh, However, you know, and, it, and let, but you know, sorry, any any sort of biblical any sort of biblical uh, moral precept that a believer is presented with, you immediately need to ask them. Yes, but how do you know that's moral? I mean, you see it written in the Bible. You say that the Bible is a moral source, and therefore this precept is moral. But really, how did you arrive at that conclusion? Because no matter what you are reading in the Bible. Uh, you still have to determine, yes, in fact, this thing that God says to do is a correct moral precept. It is not immoral. It is, in fact, moral. How do you arrive at that? And you still, they still have to come to that judgment themselves. You know, so and the, if they're the, not doing the, that, if they're just... The experience that I had, uh -huh. the experience that I had was with a friend of mine who is a believer. Mm -hmm. And we've had many, many debates over it. And, uh... Mm -hmm. And I, I finally actually had him come over to, we'll say, my side of thinking when I presented this well, well argument. And this, this was my, what I was saying to you guys is that you, you can say, you know, you can present the arguments you're presenting right now about, well, just look at the Bible and the immortality or immoral uh, lessons that are taught in the Bible. And, of course, uh, that, that should be proof enough that you, you do not get your morality from the Bible. But they don't listen to that. They tiptoe mm -hmm. around it. They tap dance around it. That's w exactly what you said. The breakthrough that I had with my friend was when I went back to this example of, well, let's just, let's just for argument's sake, let's say in the beginning of time there were cavemen. And, you know, when cavemen did exist, there was the, not, not the understanding of science, but there was the, still the emotion that was built inside of us from the beginning of time that, Said that when I do something like I, you know, throw throw my caveman friend off of a, a cliff and he dies, that I feel some sort of sorrow. So then I understand the science of what happens when I throw him off the cliff, and I understand the emotions that go along with that. And he was going, okay, yeah, I can see how those two things combined, along with you know being, being capable of feeling, uh, you know, feeling hot, cold touch, you know, uh, pain, all those kind of things. He understood now where morality possibly could be derived from if it wasn't from text in the Bible. All right. So once you uh, we're almost out of time, you're going to need to wrap this up. I I'm know. Afraid. I know. That's why I'm trying to hurry here. Yeah. Uh, and so, based on that, I then started to say, "Well, we, we all agree that there are emotions like love, right? We all, but they can't be." Yeah. No. Seriously, as... like 20 seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay. We, well, I, I, I call back next week because this is really, really yeah. fascinating. And so, and we appreciate right. it, though, very much. And we'll talk to you again about it.